All right, we got the Fox News alert now. You have new terror threats this holiday season. Yes, we're in the middle of it. Terrorists now calling for attacks on our rail system and ISIS fanatics threatening to target Christmas markets. So, what are we going to do to combat this ideology and keep Americans safe? Because, again, they telegraph it, and oftentimes they do it. Congressman Mike Gallagher served two terms in Iraq. He's a, uh, a Marine and a commander of intelligence teams where you're on armed services as well as Homeland Security in the House. So, Congressman, you hear about the going after rails. These aren't hollow threats. They say they're going to start using vehicle attacks. They started with yeah. Nice and haven't stopped. So what do you do? Yeah, I think, well, that's an important point. When you saw in the months leading up to Nice, Berlin, at a crowded Christmas market, and even in New York, was ISIS advertising in its online magazine, Dabek, with pictures of vehicles saying, mow down the infidels and the crusaders. So the first thing we have to do is take this threat very seriously. But I also think... So that magazine's name has since changed from Dabek, which refers to a city in Syria, to Ramia, which refers to Rome. That itself illustrates the problem we face, which is to say as we squeeze ISIS in Iraq and Syria, we're going to see it pop up in other places. We had an attack in Egypt last week. Uh, ISIS has an affiliate there. As brutal as you can imagine. Exactly. 300 plus Very dead, complex. 27 children. Exactly. But particularly, this is the largest mobilization of foreign fighters in human history. So as these foreign fighters return right. to their home countries in Western Europe, we're going to be dealing with this. And towards that end, I chair a task force on denying terror entry in the United States as part of the Homeland Security Committee. And we've looked at all the pathways through which terrorists could get into this country. But the most difficult thing to confront is the reality that terrorists cross our borders thousands of time every day digitally. Right. And that capacity to inspire an attack is a very difficult problem to get at. And, and you know how much New York means to them. And you know how they reveled in the bike path killer. Exactly. And knowing that you have Penn Station, Grand Central Station, and New York City as a mecca, what does that make you feel? And how does the interaction between our counter-terror unit in the New York City, the FBI, and Homeland Security? Well, I think New York deserves a lot of credit really developing NYPD and a lot of affiliated agencies developing a world-class counter-terrorism but do they communicate well to the feds? Well, I think there's always room for improvement. I think the most important thing for us to do in the short term is to stay on offense in the Middle East, because the longer we allow groups like ISIS to gain and maintain territory, yep. the longer they grow in the hearts and minds of disaffected young Muslims around the world. So we cannot let off on that pressure. But at the same time, we need to take a look, a hard look at our own capabilities, particularly our intelligence authorities, some of which are critical and about to expire, right. that we need to reauthorize in Congress, but also that cooperation between local law enforcement and federal law enforcement. But in every case, we have this narrative of a, of a lone wolf attack. But what we've seen in all these cases is often it's not a lone wolf. These are people that were on the system and it popped up onto the radar for whatever reason, but they fell off because law enforcement didn't want to continue the investigation or because people in the local Muslim community did not want to report their activity. Um, so we need to have that trust between the local community and law enforcement. And that, in many ways, is the best line of defense. And I would just say, as a military guy, you know, people every day thank me for my service. But the law enforcement folks are on the front lines every single yeah. day doing and, a dangerous job. And a job in which they're under constant scrutiny for. Exactly. But now they're, they're asked to be on the tip of the spear, which is unbelievable. And you saw that in New York City last week, and we've seen it before. Uh, Congressman Mike Gallagher, glad you're on the job for us. Thank you. Instead of face paint, you're, you're, wearing, a, <laughs> you're wearing a nice suit. Thanks so much for joining us.